All right, Mr. Number Two, we got you six six seven here, brother. All right, Mr. Number Two, we got you six six seven here, brother. We're gonna be doing a uh, full power wire upgrade all the way to the back of the transformers, and uh, gonna be doing a uh, six six seven to five hundred conversion. Talk to you on the phone, so we're gonna be putting your brand new five hundred faceplate on it. Got all my stuff laid out here. So yeah, man, got everything organized. Let's jump on this thing and get her done for you, so you can get her back. I know you've been waiting a little while, bud, and I appreciate your patience. You're one of my Model A customers, man. Ain't gave me, uh, ain't gave me no trouble at all, which is a blessing, brother. I appreciate you, man. We'll be back. number two got you all done got you all set up my man got you converted from a uh, 667 down to a 500 a 667 V down to a 500 V um, and I'll tell you what man the way they do these new circuits using these uh, 20 ohm variables <laughs> you would never think you'd be able to get the amount of uh, attenuation with just that along with a 75 ohm uh, uh, resistor to ground that voltage divider circuit there but it does man it'll put you all the way down to no power at all output really neat man so we got you done here man got all the uh, wiring down there on the switch to convert you over full power wire upgrade all the way down to the back of the transformer using 14 gauge teflon wire as you see, thickened up uh, solder on all the hot buses like I always do. Uh, thickened up on the output like I always do. Just something I, something I do, you know. <laughs> and uh, with, with these type of amps, not knowing exactly which version of DEIs there are in them, I always make sure to tune the input. And uh, luckily it looks like these are HGs. That's my guess just because it did, it did tune around 220 and that's what the uh, HGs uh, normally tune out for in Texas stars right there around 220 to 240 so that's a good sign don't look like they're the old DEIs looks like they are actually HGs and uh, I mean it is what it is I don't know if I'm supposed to be talking about that on camera or not I need to talk to my guy up at China and then shoot him an email. But anyway, man, this thing's up and done. Uh, just did my normal conversion. Did everything I always do. I threw uh, 1,000s on the uh, hot bus. By factory, they got one tiny uh, 33 microfarad electrolytic on there. Now, this is what I don't really agree with right here. This is what they had right here. for the uh, input tuning capacitor on the input splitter the input shunt capacitor whatever you want to call it yeah, they had a 211 picofarad capacitor a uh, little small 100 volt ceramic disc I personally don't like using small ceramics on input tunes I definitely have used them on the outputs as long as they're hefty enough to handle it there's all your parts that come out. Yeah, this is one of the uh, newer, newer ones. Uh, the older ones, what they did was put both IRF 520s on one side of the transformers and threw uh, 104s to shunt to make up for the input and output of the devices not being there they later switched it and put one device per side I'm not sure why they didn't do that from the get go but it is what it is so we went from uh, this right here powering this two pill section we went from this 
to this 14 gauge. We went from this right here powering, uh, delivering current to both two pill sections, or shall I say, into just to distribute the uh, current to both two pill sections. Because then it went from this right here to, uh, let's see, this right here is. I think it's 10 gauge. Yeah. Ooh, to 12. To this 12 gauge right here. So this two pill section was being powered with 12 gauge. While this one was being powered probably uh what 30 gauge? <laughs> I don't I don't know. That's what gave me the idea to even start doing power wire upgrades man, on these amps. So uh so yeah we went from this to this real thick uh eight gauge cable new concepts that is k-n-u k-o-n-c-e-p-t-z the millennial way spelled the millennial way new concepts you see it dot com that one drop entertainment nutsukal gatekeeper products <laughs> and uh talked to you on the phone we went ahead and switched the uh, 667 over to the 500 base plate. So we've done a full conversion for you, brother. Now here's what's kind of funny. This thing is almost doing the same output as it was with the driver in. Now isn't that funny? It's doing a little bit more, just a little bit more with the driver in. Alright. Feed through. Go, go. Hardly no. Reflect coming back. Good 50 ohm feed through. This is on high. Input reflect. Go, go. Just a tad bit of movement. 5 watt slug. This is a 500 watt slug. And peak. We are on 14.4 volts, by the way. Go off the scale. 500 watts. So we're getting our 500 watts. RMS, 1000 watt. Really should have them switch. <laughs> no, right there about 180, a little bit over 180 bird RMS. Alrighty, brother. So if we go ahead and put it on, move it from high drive mode to variable mode, which once you do this, you ain't gonna be driving a whole lot of power into it at this point. Me personally, this is what I would do when I'm using this bad boy as a driver. I got lots of control, man. So anyway, just putting engaging this with a variable up, you do have some attenuation to ground. So that changes us to do a little bit under 400 watts. Do right there about 100 bird. All right. Do just showing you the meter working. Turn it back just a little bit here. Ooh, 200 watts. Ooh, about 50, 60 bird. Turn it a little bit more. Ooh, 100 watts. Ooh, probably about 25 bird. You see what I'm saying, man? You got a lot of control over this thing. You turn this thing way back. Ooh, hardly no output at all. Ooh, lots of control, man. Lots of control. And, uh, yeah, I guess for the heck, I was just going to stop there, man. I'm tired. I need to get in the bed, man. But, uh, back when I first started doing these things, I, when I when I got done with one like this, man, I would, you know, I'd hook up a driver sometimes. I'd hook up, you know, big hot radios and everything. That's with the Toshiba. To, uh, Texas stars with Toshiba. Them. When I'm dealing with these right here I want to do all that crazy stuff man I want to keep this these transistors as close to health as possible as they were when they got here if I get in here and start driving the living crap out of it man that ain't, that ain't what I need to do man with these you know these are not like Toshiba's these can't take the abuse 
that a Toshiba could take. Oh boy, they do the same output. I'm talking about HGs, by the way. Uh, my, my best guess, these are HGs. He, uh, he switched over to uh, HG a long, I was about to say a long time ago, about two years ago, I think. I don't know if it's public knowledge or not, but I, I, let me tell you what, man. His sales would increase dramatically if he would just simply, and I'm saying this out of complete kindness, 100% kindness, if he would just simply put the word HG somewhere on that top, just so people would know, hey, these are DEIs, yeah, but they're HGs. I kind of call it telling the truth. <laughs> and I, I wouldn't say that, but the problem is, me and it, about every other builder knows DEI has an absolute terrible name. It's just because of X-Force using them at first and finding out that they just, they did the watts, but they just did not hold up. And then they got a very, very bad name. Every time I talk to anybody about them, they're, oh, no, nah, those are DEIs. I don't want them. I want these switched out, man. I've had people send me brand new Texas stars, and I know they're HGs in them because they're straight from the factory. I know they're HGs. But I've got to take them out and put HGs in them. It, like, it makes no sense to me. And I tell the customer, but it don't matter. It's just them seeing that DEI logo on there that rubs them the wrong way. So I'm literally taking HZ, HG 08-4s out and putting HG 08-4s in. Only difference is, is the tops are different. And you know, it, uh, it, I mean, it rubs me the wrong way from having to do that, but that's what I'm saying. If you could just put that tiny letter somewhere, HG, people would know. It, the word would get around. Plus, I w we wouldn't have to guess, too, since there's like two or three different DEI versions. I wouldn't have to guess. Are these HGs or are they not? I mean, it's really, it's kind of hard to tell. The tune, you can kind of see. They're, they're similar, but I know where HGs to on the input, usually. But you can't really know 100% unless you take the top off. We ain't going to be taking tops off transistors. That's basically a good one. But anyway, all right, man. I'm going to hook up the old stick, man, radio. I'll be right back. All righty. I'm just keeping it on 14.4 volts. I ain't hooking it on a bigger power supply or anything like that. I'm just going to drive it with the stick, man, cover 29. So uh, we're pretty much close to doubling our input drive. Uh, my, my current bench radio only does about 3 watts RMS, but this is uh, doing about 8. And uh, the peak is a little bit more. The peak is a little bit more, so uh, we got the 1,000 watt slug in now. P-E-P. -E -P. Wait, there we go. And Thomas, don't forget to turn that god dang line off when you get done. You hear me, Thomas? Gatekeeper, turn the god dang peak kit off when you get done. Goodness, I get so upset with myself, man. Going through batteries, man, like it bags of potato chips out here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. A little bit under 600 peak. That was a watt slug. Ooh, look at that. We doubled our input drive and we're almost hitting 300 burn. Almost. Ooh. Hey, we just cruising with this thing. Getting down, getting down. Letting the mop flop. Ooh. Talking about a little bit over 200. All right, brother. Another Texas star knocked down, made 10 8. On to the next one. We got about 15 20 of them here left. We'll see you.